Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So in the previous classes, we have already gone ahead and we have covered uh, what is mean, median, and mood. I've given you some snippet videos that you can just look through in your portal. And there you will find videos on what is weighted mean, what is geometric mean, what is harmonic mean. That's also done. Just go through those snippets, okay? Now, then I've also given you snippets on range and quartile deviation because there, so whatever I find is uh, relatively easy, I've just gone ahead and added that snippet. So these three, four things, I've just added this snippet. Today, first of all, my aim is to go ahead and talk about what we call as the group mean. So let me just write down what all I want to cover in the coming one or two classes, and then we will start. The first thing that I want to talk about is what is called as grouped mean. It's a fairly important topic for any exam. Okay. Then the second thing that I want to go ahead and I want to do is what is mean deviation. And here I also want to talk about what is median deviation. Further, I want to go ahead and I also want to talk about what is variance and standard deviation. And what is grouped standard deviation. So in, in, you know, in standard deviation also, you can have grouped standard deviation. So I also want to go ahead and I want to talk about that. So this is what my aim is for maybe today's class and tomorrow's class. Now, to begin with, let us go ahead and let us start with what is grouped mean. So in order to understand group mean, think about this. Let's say I give you one sample and for that sample, I give you one mean. Then I go ahead and I give you another sample and for that, I again give you one mean. And now I club these two samples together and I ask, what is the mean of this bigger uh, sample? The one that has the data from the first and the second. That is where we go ahead and we find the grouped or the combined. Right? So what, what am I saying? I am saying if N1 and N2 are sizes and X1 bar and X2 bar are mean of the two groups, then the combined mean, it can be written as N1, X1 bar plus N2, X2 bar upon N1 plus N2. This is how you can go ahead and write the combined mean. Let's take a question to understand this. So suppose I tell you that the mean marks in stats paper of 100 students are given to you as 72, right? And then I tell you that the mean marks, this class had boys and girls. So the mean marks of boys, it is 75 and their number is 70. So there are 70 boys and their mean marks that they've scored is 75. So I'm asking you find mean marks of girls of this class. Right? Just think about this. I am telling you that there are some girls, there are some boys, and when they add up, I get the class as a whole. In this class, there are 100 students. So I can just put 100 here. And the boys that are there in the class, so if I have boys here and girls here, the boys that I have are 70. Automatically, girls will be 30. The mean mark scored by boys, this is given as 75. So the mean mark scored by boys is 75. And the mean marks of entire class, this is given to you as 
72. You need to find out what will be the mean marks of the girl. Just put that in the formula. So grouped mean will be N1. This is girl into X bar G plus N2. This is boy into X bar B upon N1 plus N2. So mean marks is given as 72. N1 is given to you as 30. I don't know what this value will be. This is 70, this is 75, and this is 100. So just go ahead and find this value. So you will have 7200 is equal to 30 xg bar, and this comes up to 5250. So your xg bar will be 7200 minus 5250 divided by 30. And this will come down as 65. So the mean marks or the average marks scored by the girls, it is going to be this much, right? Take another question. So suppose I tell you that average daily wage of all workers of a factory, they're given as 444, right? And average wage of males. This is given to you as bit of definition is pretty simple. We are just saying that the combined mean is N1 X1 bar plus N2 X2 bar upon N1 plus N2. This is my combined mean that I have. Should I for go forward? Okay. So average marks of male and female are given, uh, average uh, wage of male and female is given to you. So average wage of male is given to you as 480 and average wage of female beta that is given to you as 360. I'm asking you find percentage of male and female employed by factory. Okay. I need to find out percentage of male and female. So percentage kya hota beta? Kitne male unge? Upon total population, male plus female into 100. If we write this. Male plus female into 100. That can be your percentage. So in a way, the aim that I have is to go ahead and find this percentage. Right? That is what is asked to me in this question. So, okay, now just go ahead and put this in the formula. So, we know that X bar will be N1 X1 bar plus N2 X2 bar upon N1 plus N2. So, X bar is given to you as 444. But N1 N2 is pata. But X1 bar, pehle ki average di 480 and dusre ki 360. So, I can just put this as 480 N1 plus 360 n2 upon n1 plus n2 right try to go ahead and solve this what will you get you will get 444 n1 plus n2 is equal to 480 n1 plus 360 n2 so 444 n1 plus 444 n2 is equal to 480 n1 plus 360 n2 so when you go ahead and you solve this, take N1s on one side and N2s on the other side, what will you get? You will get that N1 by N2 beta that will come out, come out as 7 by 3. Okay, it's supposed to just solve this out. So ye 444 N1 could take this here. 360 N2 could take this here, subtract. So then you will find the ratio that N1 by N2 is coming as 7 by 3. Now just think about this. What is beta? What is male? Male is 
एन वन अपॉन एन वन प्लस एन टू ना सो वेन एवर यू फाइंड दिस रेशियो दैट एन वन बाय एन टू इज कमिंग एज सेवन बाय थ्री वॉट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन सिंपली टेक दैट एन वन वुड हैव बीन सेवन एंड एन टू वुड हैव बीन थ्री राइट सो आई एम टेकिंग एन वन एज सेवन एंड एन टू एज थ्री इसी रेशियो में रहे होंगे ना सो एन वन बाय एन वन प्लस एन टू विल बी सेवन बाय सेवन प्लस थ्री परसेंटेज निकालना है तो इन टू हंड्रेड दिस वुड बी सेवन बाय टेन इन टू हंड्रेड so this means it would have been 70% so the male workers are 70% and the female workers will be 30% right acha by chance you want to debate ki ma'am ye 7 by 3 hi kyu 7 and 3 hi kyu le ratio 7 by 3 hai na it could have meant ki ye 14 hai aur ye 6 hai no problem that will always cancel out na if if suppose 14 by 6 bhi hota number of males 14 hote hain number of females 6 hoti then also the ratio is 7 by 3 only right so us case mein 14 by 6 bhi agar isme daloge you will get the same thing only you put any value such that the ratio is 7 by 3 you will get the answer as 70% so indirectly you can simply take n1 as 7 and n2 as 3 so if the males are 70% then we know that the female that would be 30% so you will get the female ratio as 30% okay take down the next question now so now i am telling you that the arithmetic mean of 50 students that is given to you um of a college that is given to you as 5 8 right and it also tells you that the height of 30 of these is given in the frequency distribution below right so it says find am of remaining 20 and you're given a frequency distribution so you're given height and you're given frequency so 5 4 height wale there are four people 5 6 height ke there are 12 people 5 8 height ke there are four people 5 10 height ke there are eight people and 6 in 6 feet tall there are two people so what you have to see here beta is that you are actually given ye if you add this this frequency is coming to 30 so for 30 people you know their heights but you don't know the average of these 30 people so you must find out what the average will be ratio is coming out as 7 is to 3 are you getting some other ratio here This will be beta four eighty minus four forty four. So this will be thirty six n one, and this will be four forty four minus three sixty. This will be eighty four n two. So n one by n two will come down as eighty four by thirty six. Right. so i hope uh, you're getting this ratio hmm? okay so so now let's go ahead and do this ha huh? so height of 30 students is given to you but this is a frequency distribution you need to go ahead and you need to find the average to average kaise nikal sakta hai use any method that you want directly bhi average nikal sakte ho aur you know you can go ahead and you can find average by using the step deviation method also Irrespective of that, एक चीज पहले समझ लो मुझसे बेटा एवरेज इसके निकालना ना डिफिकल्ट होता है सो एनी टाइम दैट यू विल बी गिवेन अ क्वेश्चन विच इज लाइक दिस दे विल ऑल्सो बी गिविंग यू सम कन्वर्जन है ना सो दे विल बी टेलिंग यू दैट द कन्वर्जन इज दैट दिस मच फीट कन्वर्ट टू दिस मच इन इंजेस राइट सो दैट आई कैन फाइंड आउट द एवरेज प्रॉपरली दैट इज वन Uh, easier way to find out things. 
so here also what i can do is i can convert the height in this is given me in feet but i can convert this height in terms of inches usually if you are supposed to do that they will be giving you the formula to convert it they will be telling you multiply it by this so that you get the height in inches anyhow suppose you have converted these height in inches and you have got this 64 66 68 70 and 72 these are your heights in inches and you are also given frequency 4 12 4 8 4 then just remember that i need to first find the average of these 30 people so i can go ahead and take some a let this be a then i can find the deviation that will be x minus a by h hai na so this will be 64 minus 68 h yahan par 1 hai there is no class given to me so 64 minus 68 will be minus 4 hai na so you can take this as minus 4 minus 2 0 2 4 and then you can go ahead and if you want you can assume some h on your own so you can say let this h be 2 because common aa par hai and you can just divide so minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and 2 and then you can just do f into deviation ye final deviation hai is deviation ko you can multiply it with the frequency so minus 8 minus 12 0 8 and 8 and this will come out as minus this will come out as minus 4 hmm this is what you will get so here i think the frequency was 2 in the last one so you will get here as 4 so this will be minus 8 so once you have got this you just have to go ahead and put this in the in the formula So your mean will be a plus h summation f d by summation your f, है ना? Now you may or may not want to go ahead and do this. हाँ, so बेटा d dash is when I just take common. So what I have done here is because when I did x minus a ना, I got these values. If you see anything common between them, you can divide through that common part. So because I saw two is common, I just divided it across. So I got minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. जो two से divide किया है, I will just multiply it back in my formula here, right? So usually when you find this h, it is the size of the class interval. But here no class is given. I am getting something common, so I divide it. So बेटा यहाँ पर आपका a हो गया sixty eight, h हो गया two, submission f d dash आ गया minus eight. And summation f is thirty. This is for thirty people, right? Yeah? So when you will solve this, you will get suppose something like this: two zero two four by thirty inches. ध्यान से. This is the mean of the thirty students. ये thirty students का mean अब मुझे पता है. And I also know the mean of the total fifty students. Now can you find the mean of the remaining students? You can. है ना सो नाउ यू कैन जस्ट यूज द फॉर्मूला दैट एक्स बार विल बी एन वन एक्स वन बार प्लस एन टू एक्स टू बार अपॉन एन वन प्लस एन टू सपोज बेटा ये भी दिस वैल्यू इन इंच इट कम्स आउट एट सिक्सटी एट आई शुड है इंच दिस कम्स एट सिक्सटी एट सो वॉट यू कैन डू यू कैन जस्ट प्लग सिक्सटी एट हियर 30 students ka mean i found out as 2024 by 30 remaining 20 students ka mean is not known to me and this 